<laughs> I know. I'm trying. It's, I'm channeling Shirlene Dion. Anyway. Hi, guys. Welcome to another Voice Matters episode. My name is Johan Bester, founder and director of Charisma Performing Arts, where we are all about the voice, all things vocal. Check out the playlists, different playlists on the channel. There's something for anyone who's interested in singing, in choir music, in vocal health, in, even in speaking well. But today I want to chat about my recent experience. Well, I've had experience for a long time in this, but recently it's been an increasing experience in working with singer-songwriters. So lots of young people come to me, teenagers, they write songs and they want to improve their songs and then ultimately go and record their songs. So I want to just chat quickly about a few things as it relates to writing a good song, especially writing a good song for yourself to sing. So the first thing that is very important to me in writing a song is that it has to be real and authentic and true, all those things mean the same, to you. You cannot write a song if you can't relate to the song. The words that you choose and the way you choose to use the words, the phrases, the kind of expressions you use in the lyrics must be something that makes sense for someone your age, someone who is in the specific phase of life that you are in. So if you're a 15-year-old, your lyrics should reflect that. It can be intelligent lyrics. I'm not saying it has to be dumbed down because you're younger. That's not what I'm saying at all. Just like it has to be, has to make sense for people when they look at you singing your song, then the words you use must fit your age and who you are and where you are at in your life. And then the second thing that is linked to this is your lyrics have to be relatable to your audience, right? Now, people, people differ on this a little bit, um, and I guess there, there are different arguments, arguments to be made. But I think when I write a song, I write it with someone in mind, an audience in mind. Now, in my case, mostly I only write on demand. So I write when somebody needs a song for a specific occasion. So I guess that's different. I think if you're a, if you're a performing artist, a recording artist, or someone who gigs a lot, then you just maybe write lots and lots of songs. But still, you have to have a target audience in mind. So maybe you're someone who has a small band or you know, two other players, musicians who play with you. And, and, and mainly what you do is you perform in local smaller venues. Maybe you um, are in a different space where you open for, uh, you know, the concerts of, of bigger bands, more well-known bands. Maybe you are a well-known performer, singer-songwriter. So all of that will play a part. If you take someone like Ed Sheeran, for instance, or someone like Adele, especially looking at both of those artists' latest stuff, they just, they just write what they want. Um, I don't think Adele sat there and thought, hmm, I wonder what people want to listen to, what people want to hear, as much as I want to tell a story about my life, about what has been going on in my life, right? So I think if you're a, a superstar, if you're very well-known, you have a large audience, then you have more freedom to do what you want. But most of us are not there, but just has a smaller sphere of influence. So I do think you need to consider when you write the song that the lyrics and the style of the song needs to be relatable to your audience. They need to get it. They need to understand what you're trying to say. And then, of course, what I've been talking about for the last few minutes basically mostly relates to the lyrics of your song. Now, I've seen songwriters with very different methods of songwriting and I I've come to know in my life that there is no one way to do it there are many many different ways in which world-class and Grammy winning songwriters um, write songs many different ways uh, some people start with a melody they get a melody in their head 
some people start with a little vibe. Whatever. So sometimes when I write, I sit at the piano because I'm a pianist. If you're a guitarist, you might sit with your guitar and just fiddle, fiddle around a little bit and find a riff, find a rhythm, find some chords, whatever. But the point about lyrics is a song is called a song because it has words. Um, when I play this sometimes... No, that is Fury Lease by Beethoven. But sometimes when I play something like that, people say, oh, I love that song. And I'm like, um, it's not a song. It has no words. <laughs> a song has words. And, it, and the words are um, sung, presented, um, expressed by a human voice. That's what makes it a song. So the point is, the lyrics need to tell a story. So many contemporary songs, I'm sad to say, and some of the most listened to songs on Spotify, some lyrics are just pointless. It's just repetitive, empty, in my opinion, empty lyrics that, that don't relate to someone's story or to the heart of something. Um, so for me, lyrics, the story of the words need to be meaningful, you need to tell a story, you need to think about the words. Don't just write things that have end rhyme and think, oh, that's going to be a nice song. No, no, no. Tell a story. Search a little bit for some interesting words, maybe some synonyms for something you're trying to say. Um, but put a lot of thought into the way you say what you want to say and the story you want to tell. And structure the story, right? If you, if you write a story, even an essay or a short story or whatever, there's an introduction, you introduce characters, there's a plot, you know, there's a villain, there's a hero, whatever. The story has to make sense. So think about the story and how you are going to unpack and tell the story in your song. So that's lyrics. And then the next super important thing in a song is, of course, the melody. Now, what is a melody? A melody is a bunch of different pitches following on in a certain order. So in music we say intervals, the interval between two following pitches or notes, the distance. So this, that interval is called the fifth, five steps, right? And a song with uh, that inter opens with that interval is, right? So how this note is followed by that note determines. If I only played th those four notes, you will go, oh, that's twinkle, twinkle, little star, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, if that's the way you learned it, right? So intervals are how the different pitches follow on from one another, all right? So that's very, very important. And the main thing, the main function of your melody is to make your lyrics stronger. You can't write a funky melody, so some very interesting intervals between the different pitches in your melody, just for the sake of it being funky or interesting or different, if it doesn't make the lyrics stronger. The storytelling in the words must be amplified, enriched, enhanced, taken to another level of emotive connection, by the melody you put to those words. Then it has to be said that there are very different ways of writing melodies. Some songs which I consider to be really beautifully written songs and well-written songs have, have a more predictable melody. In other words, when you listen to it, you go, oh yeah, it feels right, it makes sense the way it follows on. And an example of that for me is a song I mention a lot when I talk about songs is Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, right? Especially when you get to this part. Mm -hmm. 
it's not profoundly new or interesting. It's just very steppy. Yeah? So it's just up and down in a step either way most of the time. But it's beautiful. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. That one step up makes the fourth, the fifth in the lyric stronger because the fifth is a progression from a fourth, right? Goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and then major lift. So on the word lift, the melody lifts with one step. Baffled king composing hallelujah. So it's beautifully written, but it's a predictable melody. It's not profoundly interesting, new, or groundbreaking. All right, so that's one way. Another way is some melodies have a very, very specific or catchy interval or characteristic to the part of the song that we all remember. An example of that is Somewhere Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly over the rainbow Why then, oh why can't I? Right? That's called an octave, right? It's an octave jump. And then a sixth. And another sixth. And the rest is just very, very simple. But what makes that song so strong is that opening octave, firstly. Somewhere over the rain. And then skies are blue. That's sixth. And then another sixth. Right? Beautiful, very recognizable, very, very strong, right? If it was somewhere, it wouldn't have sounded the same at all. So brilliantly written. Another one is that um, there's a place for us. What's it called? Um, it's called Somewhere, actually, the song. Interesting. From uh, the musical... Somewhere from West Side Story. It's funny, we just had Somewhere Over the Rainbow, now it's just Somewhere. So it starts like this. There's a place for us. Somewhere a place for us. I think the words are. But this. That minus seventh interval. And then... then that, that repeats. That is what makes that so recognizable. And one of the greatest examples of a catchy interval, an uh, interval that's written very specifically and that makes it so memorable, is the song All By Myself that Celine Dion made famous, right? Now that, that song, I'm sorry, oh songwriters, lyrically is just really void of a lot of meaning for me. <laughs> But it doesn't matter, because what makes the song so emotive is the way the melody is written and then the supporting chord structure as well, which is very interesting. So, all by myself. So it's, which is a very simple interval, right? It's a fifth, but it does like a sus or a, a, a add to chord which then um, resolves, sometimes I can't speak, which then resolves to the third, right? But that's the catchy part of it. All by myself, I want to be all by myself. So again, the fifth, but then a different interval after that. So, by myself. <laughs> 
No, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me try again. Oh, by my shame. Don't want to be oh by myself anymore. Right? And then, of course, that fabulous, one of the best ever in a contemporary song, Key Changes. Oh, by myself, don't want to be. Very interesting. We're in G. I'm playing it in G at the moment. So we have a G chord, a B minor chord, and then a D minor, which is just makes no sense in that key at all. But anyway, don't want to be. Uh, self, self. <laughs> I want to be all by myself, right? Instead of myself, it goes, myself anymore. Right? So interesting. A minor, which in G is the second, which is fine. And then a C minor chord, which is absolutely nonsensical and then just a semitone down in the bass to a B so we so we went from G major to B major which is not uncommon a third up or down but the way that the songwriter went there is just so interesting so yeah an example of very specific melodic intervals that makes up a melody that's so catchy so different and which makes it so memorable Okay, so we've covered what I think are the two most important things in writing a song. The lyrics and the melody, right? And we talked about how it has to be relatable to you, the songwriter and the singer, if you're the singer-songwriter. It has to be relatable to you, it has to be real from your point of view, and it has to be relatable to your audience. But in terms of the, the, the elements that make a song good, lyrics and melody are the most important. Sometimes the next point is, well, the next point is also important, but sometimes that can change in production of a song, right? So um, I was going to talk about chord progression or harmonies, like I just touched on when I did some of these examples to you. Um, the underlying chord progression just can add a lot of powerful, emotive um, effect, you know, to, to a melody. But like I said, sometimes we write a song with some chords in mind, but then when it goes into production with a, with a production team, a producer, a team of musicians, then sometimes that changes. Um, so that ultimately doesn't have to be, have to be super predetermined. I'm careful what I'm saying here because sometimes it absolutely is. Like I'm sure Leonard Cohen felt the chords when he wrote the melody. sure he felt that very strongly but but sometimes in in contemporary songs you really don't have to have it, all the chord progressions worked out but if you do design specific chords like in the Beatles song for instance then it has to make the melody stronger so think about this a good melody makes the lyrics stronger in other words, whatever the lyrics are trying to communicate emotionally, emotively, is made stronger by the melody. And then a good chord progression, underlying harmonic structure, makes the melody stronger. Can you see why all these elements are, are important? Um, and you have to think about these things. Don't just play the three chords that you know. You know, if you don't have a great vocabulary in terms of your... Um, musical knowledge and knowledge of chord structures and keys and whatever, then you find other musicians who do. But, but, but be very thoughtful and, uh, and very intentional with what harmonies, chord structures you put under your beautiful melody, which makes your lyrics stronger. And then the final thing I want to say to singer-songwriters is write a song that is technically achievable you can't write a song that covers two and a half octaves if you cannot sing two and a half octaves does that make sense 
Um, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And don't say, oh, I always write in G. I mean, that's just silly because it depends where the melody sits in relation to the tonic or to the bass note of the home key. So, so your technical ability, how far developed, how well developed your vocal technique is, has to play a part in how you write a song for yourself. Um, don't try to do something you cannot. I've, I've heard many brilliantly written songs that doesn't cover more than an octave. I'm thinking of Regina Spector's The Call. It started out as a feeling Which then grew into a hope Which then turned into a... Quiet. You know? And then... And then that word grew louder and louder Till it was a battle cry You'll come back. That whole song basically sits between B flat and B flat. And it's beautiful. So it doesn't have to have a range of two octaves or something for it to be a good song. Not at all. So that is the last thing that you need to consider. Write something that is singable to you if it is a song that you're writing for yourself. And anyway, if you write a song that's going to be sung by other people, it also has to be singable. Like, I mean, if Adele called me or Kelly Clarkson and said, Johan, write me a song, then, of course, I will I will take into account their voice type, their technical skill, the range where their uh, voice sounds amazing. So if you're that level of songwriter who writes for the superstars, then fair enough. You've got very specific things, right? But generally, when I write a song, I want many people to be able to sing it. So it has to be singable. It has to be written well for the voice. So yes, of course, the whole thing about songwriting and the creative process um, is a very complex issue. And there has been many people who came before me far more knowledgeable than I am who have talked on the topic. Um, and if you really want to dig into it, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can dig into. But I just wanted to chat about a few points today that I found in my life, especially working with young or new singer songwriters and songwriters just things that i think is valuable to talk about and to consider so i hope you found it helpful um if you did and you know someone else who might benefit please share the video with them i'd really appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet why don't you do so today it will really help me and make me so happy <laughs> thanks so much for watching i hope you are well and that you will stay well until we see each other again